Let's create the dessert of the last menu in my blind date journal today. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel Drunk Journal Art and welcome to the last episode of the Blind Date Journal project that I'm doing with Susanne from Bollenhut Art as a design team project for 49 Dragonflies. I have to say I'm a little bit sad because this is going to be the last episode but I guess that I have a really, really fun and cute idea to make this dessert for this last menu. Susanne wants me to create a Kaiserschmarrige Collage. Collage. I'm, also, I'm always saying that in German. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Kaiserschmarrige Collage in an old pinkish color with green. So Kaiserschmarrn is a sweet meal in Austria. Some people are eating that as a dessert, but some people also are eating that as the main course. It's really popular here in Austria, um, but of course also in other countries. I couldn't find a really good translation for that, but I'm trying to give you some kind of a recipe in this video, how to make your own Kaiserschmarrn in your journal. Yeah. <laughs> So first of all, Kaiserschmarrn is something that you put into a pan and then you heat it up. So I don't want to burn my journal today. That's the reason why I will put it away for a moment and I will create sorry. I will create my Kaiserschmarrn on an extra plate and later on I will put my plate with the Kaiserschmarrn on it into my journal. So um first of all, we need a pan <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> and it's always good um, to have a really decorative pen. So perhaps if you have some guests, and you know, guests are sometimes strange people. They are expecting a really, really delicious Kaiserschmarrn. And perhaps if you are doing this recipe for the first time, you have some problems. Perhaps you don't know this recipe or you don't know this meal you are doing that for the first time and then perhaps you are a little bit nervous and you are not sure if the result will be as delicious as you are hoping and <laughs> for this reason it's really important that you take a really decorative pen and if you don't have one of course you can make one by yourself so where are we here of course <laughs> We are on a crafty channel here, junk journal art. So let's create something decorative to put our um, Kaiserschmarrn in. So a really good idea is uh, water <laughs> for some reason. The next good idea is to put some decorative uh, things on it. For example, this here. <coughs> to make it look a little bit more, you know, interesting and that stuff. <laughs> and if you don't have this kind of stuff, you can also use, you know, paper doilies or something like that. Put it around your pen and then that will look really, really interesting. And Perhaps you are thinking, what is she talking there? She doesn't know what she is doing. Yes, you are right. I'm absolutely... I have no idea what I'm doing here today. Because <laughs> I've never done this before. So, let's put this here. Ooh, this could make also a really cool pattern on something else, perhaps. But I want to dry this now. so that we can make the frame of our pen later. And of course, we are not wasting this stuff here. So, um, you know, when you use a pen for the first time, then it can happen that the things that you put in them stick to the pen because you have never used it before. And the good thing about Kaiserschmarrn is, If you use a really old pen that has some 
um, some, uh, you know, how is that called in English? Louise, your joke has your joke has gone because you don't know how that is called in English. Oh, and it's it's so funny. It's often the same word in English like in German. If um, you have a crust in your pan, then your paste later on will not stick to the pan. And that's good. Use a really, really old pen to get the best results. <laughs> I wish this is what I want to use, but this is only my protection paper. <laughs> oh my goodness, is this cute? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> let's go on. Um, By the way, um, if you want to use an old pen, that's totally fine. But please, <laughs> please make sure that you don't have any, you know, fish or meat or something like that in your pen before um, when you want to make a Kaiserschmarrn in your pen. That would be not so fine. You would get some really weird taste. Um, to your thing, to your Kaiserschmarrn. So make sure that, you know, even if the pan is old, it is clean. There can be some crumbles of sweet meals or something like that. That would be not the problem. But if you get some crumbles of old fish or fries or something like that into your pan, that would be not so good. <laughs> and by the way, I I haven't had any alcohol or something like that today. <laughs> so now, <laughs> this looks really beautiful. I don't want to put that here <laughs> because I'm covering that up. But yeah, mm, I guess there's no other chance. That that oh that kills the first of my nerves today. Who says that we can't do it like this? <laughs> we'll just do it like this so that we can see. this etched there okay so then we have to put some oil into our pan the Austrians prefer to take butter I mean oil would work as well but of course butter gives this whole Kaiserschmarrn this kind of you know really delicious flavor so um, I think I will destroy my edge here anyway. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Some butter. And then you have to put that to your stove and heat that up. <clears throat> and ooh, <laughs> we want to heat that up really, really well because otherwise um, our Kaiserschmarrn will not get fluffy. And we want to have the Kaiserschmarrn in the end really, really fluffy. So uh, we want to put um, really much butter into the pan. And we want to heat that up so that it gets a little bit, um, that it gets these little bubbles. Do you know what I mean? So it shall be really, really hot, but of course not so hot that it gets black. <laughs> that would be not so fun. But we want to heat that up really, really good. And perhaps it's also <laughs> not so important when in the first minutes there's not butter everywhere in your pan. I guess it's okay when it's only here on the left side and on the bottom. 
I mean, if you use, for example, a round pen, of course, that would look a little bit different as well, but that's not the problem. So we will wait a little bit and heat that up until it gets really, whew, you know, hot and delicious. And it can happen that when you heat up this butter in your pan, that it gets a little bit black here and there. It can also happen that you get some bubbles, but that's exactly what we want to have here. The butter has to be really, really hot so that, whoop, <laughs> so that our Kaiserschwan later on will get really, really fluffy. We are going to need this heat to make it really, really fluffy. So let this be really, really uh, become really, really hot so that you can see all of these little tiny bubbles in the butter. Okay, so next we can prepare the duff for our Kaiserschmarrn. Duff, is that the right word? My translator says uh, duff. Yeah. I think this paste thingy. So for that, we are going to need, depending on how many guests you will get, one or more eggs. So um, I think these green eggs here <laughs> are really good because Susanne wants this in old pink, and green so I have chosen these green eggs and then we need some flour so I thought I will take this package here of flour and we also need some milk um, and some people also put some sparkling water into this duff so I have some milk and some sparkling water here and then we have to mix that really, really well. Barbara, I'm really sorry that I have to tear your beautiful papers. But this time it's not my fault because Susanne said Kaiserschmarrn. <laughs> so I, of course, want to show the, the original recipe. By the way, my hubby, who is not my hubby, Gary... <laughs> He's making the best Kaiserschmarrn in this world and he is doing it exactly like this. So I thought I would like to show you his recipe. So we have some eggs, some flour, some milk and a little bit of sparkling water. And then we have to mix that up really, really well. And then... What am I doing here? Susanne. Then we have to put that into the pan. And then, because of the heat, it will get really, really fluffy. And all of our ingredients will get one big piece of Kaiserschmarrn. And because of the heat in your pan, it gets a little bit brownish or sometimes even a tiny little bit of black, but that doesn't matter. We want to have it really, really, you know, a little bit crunchy on the, on some of those areas. So make sure that you leave it as long in your pan as it gets a little bit brownish and yeah, in, in German we would say goldbraun. So uh, a golden, goldish, goldish, is that a word? Brownish golden color. <laughs> so approximately like this. And then the trick of making a really, really good Kaiserschmarrn is that you take it apart into... Ooh, into single pieces like this. So you don't want to have this whole thing on your plate. 
otherwise it would be a normal pancake but you want to have these pieces that's sometimes not so easy to get that apart be carefully and don't hurt yourself when you try this don't use a knife or something like that to get this apart from each other because yeah that's not the original way of making a Kaiserschmarrn you don't have to, to use a knife or something like that um, but yeah you know make these little really random strange pieces <laughs> and then you will have the perfect Kaiserschmarrn and of course now you have to serve that in some way and sometimes it's really cool when you use your pan as your plate <laughs> so um, some people in Austria um, do that especially in some kind of yeah those really rustic restaurants um, you will find your Kaiserschmarrn in the pan where it was um, made so you will not get some kind of a plate or something like that a special plate but you will get it in the pan where the cook has made it and of course that's a cool thing because yeah you can see where it was prepared for you so that you can eat it directly from there and um, it's also a good thing to serve it in the pan because the pan is hot of course and if you put your Kaiserschmarrn to a cold plate for example then it will get as cold as the plate is and we don't want that of course so um, then it's really important of course to make a nice arrangement on your plate so if you have ever cooked something for your friends of course you want to have a nice arrangement on your plate so try to get your pieces of the Kaiserschmarrn in a really nice way here to the plate or to the pan what you want to use like this <laughs> perhaps a little bit more I mean we uh, have enough to invite many many cute friends and I know that I have invited really cute friends for today so I have to make this a little bit bigger <laughs> a little bit more Kaiserschmarrn to this pan here like this and you can also before you serve it um, put some sugar to these pieces and turn them around a little bit so that they get a little bit more brownish like they were before um, some people do that some people don't like that it's depending of course on how sweet you want you you want to have your your Kaiserschmarrn oh, excuse me please so I guess this is really cool and then you can of course say to your friends lovely friends <laughs> the Kaiserschmarrn is ready we can eat now <laughs> and if you have made everything really really delicious and exactly like I've told you here in this recipe video then you will see that many of your friends will come and they all want to taste from your Kaiserschmarrn and that's of course some kind of a problem because you have to choose who shall get a little bit of your Kaiserschmarrn and who not? <laughs> That's a hard decision, but I guess yeah, you can perhaps also make a bigger plate and have the possibility to invite more than one friend that's also an option but I guess in this case in this case hmm in this case 
Kitty has one, I think. So by the way, um, this is Felix, Felix the Fox. And Felix and his friends have driven me nuts the last few days. Because I had an idea. <laughs> Seriously, I had an idea for this dessert and how I want to, to create it. Um, I, I had a really, really cool idea. And then Barbara came up with her video where she showed these cute friends here, Felix the Fox and his friends. And I was in shock, Barbara. <laughs> these little creatures are so cute. So cute to say it with her words. These are so cute. And I couldn't resist to throw my idea into the trash can to be able to use these little creatures here. And to be honest, I'm so happy <laughs> that I have thrown my other idea on making this dessert into the trash can. I'm so happy that I, I did that and that I'm not following my original idea now because these little guys are so cute. They are, yeah, you know, you see them and you know I have to print them out immediately and try something with them. And I guess they are really, really versatile. I can see that already, even if I haven't finished my first project with them. But these are so, so cute. <laughs> what do you think? Shall we do this like this? Um, I mean, I have a failed die-cut butterfly here. I, I've done that the other day. Oh, I think Gary did this and it failed a little bit. These little things here didn't come out so well, but I guess he made some mistakes because they are coming out really well, actually. I thought this is a fail. Yeah, here some some of these things are not cut so well. So, but I guess I will use this anyway. Why shall I throw that away when I can put that? Oh, yes, behind this little friend here to make this look way cute, huh? <laughs> then it was before. I mean. These are cute as, as they are. You know what I mean. But such a die cut is always a really, really great idea. I love using die cuts, especially when I don't use them like they are meant to use. I mean, this butterfly, of course, is still a butterfly, but it's some wings as well. Do you know what I mean? Kitties don't have wings, I know, and that's what I want to say. <laughs> I really like that. Okay. <clears throat> this is really cool, but I guess something is missing here. And of course you can always take some special things from your, from your kitchen. Um, for example, some special flavors. Some people like cinnamon on their Kaiserschmarrn. And of course, you can feel free to put everything that you want to your Kaiserschmarrn. Some people also like Kaiserschmarrn with this. Hmm, is, yeah, My translator says applesauce, but I, I guess that is not the right word. It's a really delicious thing that is made out of smashed apples. Really, really delicious. And um, yeah, of course, you can put that there as well. Or, or you can also eat some fruits or something like that in combination with the Kaiserschmarrn. But no matter what you want to eat with your Kaiserschmarrn, it's really important 
that you enjoy it and that you enjoy not only eating it but also making it so when Gary is making some Kaiserschmarrn for me it's really yeah it's always a really special time for me because the whole kitchen is smelling um, and you know ooh, in a few minutes I have my Kaiserschmarrn and I really really love that to eat that and to yeah be with him in that moment and it's a really 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 fantastic thing when he is doing that for me it's always some kind of you know holiday or something like that I feel very special when he is doing that for me so that I really can enjoy that and I think it's important to have those moments in your life where you are together with your hubby or your best friend or someone else who is important in your life. And yeah, when you enjoy this time that you have together. And last but not least, some people also are putting some powdered sugar on top of the Kaiserschmarrn and I guess if you have friends like Kitty eating the Kaiserschmarrn with you it can also happen that she has some powdered sugar on herself <laughs> that happens to me every time when I'm trying to eat Kaiserschmarrn I'm ending up with having powdered sugar all over my face my clothes and everywhere <laughs> Susanne, what do you think about this? Is this a Kaiserschmarrige collage where in, in old pink and green? I guess it is. I guess it is. But I have the feeling, and I don't know why, that something is missing here. Have I failed my recipe? I don't know. Hmm. I I think I know what it is. I think I know what it is. Um, since this blind date journal project is a design team project for 49 dragonflies and we have spent so much time with her wonderful digitals, um, I guess we have to add some gold splatters to this very last project. I mean, I can't finish this blind date journal project without gold splatters. That's not possible. And of course, I can't finish this project without saying thank you to you as my viewers. I'm so, so happy how you all have reacted to this blind date journal project. You have written so many wonderful comments. You were so nice and so sweet. I think even more sweet than Kitty is. Sorry, Barbara. <laughs> but it is like it is. It was a really huge project. I think I've never done such a huge um, collaboration on YouTube before. So it was a really massive thing, time consuming, with many discussions between us. And it was not so easy for us to do that. But it was totally worth every second. Because, yeah... You were just so sweet and you've reacted so cute to this project. So thank you very, very much um, for your reaction to this project. And I hope, of course, that you like this last project here as well. But we have to put that into the journal, of course. But first of all, I have to dry this. Otherwise, I have a problem. <clears throat> Whew. Oh my goodness, is this big? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think when I measured <laughs> this thing... Ah, okay, so I have glued this way more to the right side than I originally had planned. Hmm. Okay, so I think this page could be really cute, but I have to bring this in here in some way so that I can, you know... Here's this button, 
that could be a problem and this could be a problem as well because I have to glue that in this fold but this is so uh, you know delicate that I guess it will be no problem gluing this here and I guess I have an idea how to solve this problem there with the button so let's see we can make that work we will put this here and then just I think I can just fold that like this and then I will figure out where the button is below this thing and then I will take a hole punch oh my goodness okay so I have to do that in steps I guess like this oh that looks really good <laughs> that looks really cool that looks really cool we we have to use that somewhere <laughs> is that big enough to leave the space for this button here yeah I guess no it's not big enough uh, this is not big enough something like that and then this paper clip has this a function oh yes <laughs> we have to put that here for a moment and then I will glue this here to the page I'm using some gel medium so that it stays really sturdy on my page it makes this this page a little bit thicker and a little bit stiff of course but I want to have this glued in really really well so that it can't fall out or fall apart and because I have to glue that into this fold there I make sure that I have enough glue here um, later on I can't reach these areas anymore so I make sure that I have enough glue here in the very beginning that I don't have any problems when I now put that here Then we can press this. This is this is nearly finished, I would say. I think um, first of all, we are going to glue this gorgeous circle somewhere. <clears throat> and I am thinking if I want to include that into this little pocket set that Susanna has made. Has she glued this? Yeah, she has glued that. Hmm. I want to bring that perhaps underneath this coin. No, no. Or perhaps even here. I think I like that there so that it is separated, but also part of this thing. It has the same colors. It's cool. That's really cool. And this little piece of lace, Susanna has some lace here as well. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah okay we have that but <laughs> there's still missing something and I will tell you in a second what that is we're going to need some shading because until now Kitty is a little bit lost there I would say I'm using the Marabou art crayon as nearly always what is that? Ooh, that is the black one. I, I didn't want to have the black one. Uh, firstly, my black one is empty. And I want to use the brownish one. Because I don't want to have the shadows too extremely. So I'm just scribbling some of this crayon to my palette. And then I'm using a water brush. And just mix that up with some water. Then I will add some shadows here and there. Why are those wings standing out not, not so much like I want that? I mean, here on the right side it looks really cool, but on the left side it's nearly invisible. Hmm, I don't like that. Sorry, but I don't like that. I can't leave this project. <laughs> <laughs> with this so let me try something I have some gesso that I have watered down here in white and I'm trying to 
uh, bring some of that to the wings. <laughs> now it looks really strange. Now it looks really, really strange. Okay, so last idea. Let's uh, um, let's add some gilding wax. Let's try that. Why not? It's the last project. I mean, <laughs> what can happen? Ooh. Ooh. What can happen? It can happen that this will look really nice in the end and really elegant. That can happen, Louisa. <sighs> Yeah, now it looks really cool, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. I think now I like it. And that's everything that <laughs> matters. I mean, if you do such a project, of course, you have to like it and no one else. That looks way better than before. And I guess if we put some shadow behind the Kaiserschmarrn, it looks way more dimensional so I mean we have dimension here around kitty now but perhaps we can put some here as well so that this shadow is not so extreme I mean it looks you know it's really outstanding there and perhaps if I put some of this brown color here as well it looks more like one piece but what we can try is we can take some distress oxide ink I'm using vintage photo today that's also what I've used to create this background on the first paper now I'm trying to get the edges a little bit darker I mean if you want to do that please do that before you glue it I had a really hard job, by the way, <laughs> with this video today because I wanted to tell you this story about the Kaiserschmarrn and this recipe and I had this in my head and it was not so easy to concentrate to the actual project that I'm doing here. But I wanted to make it a little bit funny today because it's the last episode and I thought I have to think about something special and so... Yeah, perhaps I haven't thought about my actual project. Or, no, the project, I, I had the project in my head, but the techniques that I was using here were not so extremely in my head like they would be when I make a normal tutorial or something like that. Ooh, that makes a really big difference. Hopefully you can see that when I show that to you in a second. I will just go around the wings here with the vintage photo as well. I guess that gives it a really nice definition. And also I have cut the cat with a white frame. That's also not such a good idea. I'm just realizing that I'm trying to distress her here as well so that the white edge is not visible anymore oh yes dimension you who <laughs> dimension thank you very much now the white has gone nearly completely except this little area but that's okay for me um i guess this looks way better now yeah Okay, so this was the dessert of the last menu of the Blind Date Journal project. And I'm hoping that you like this little idea here. And of course, I'm hoping that you will cook your own Kaiserschmarrn in your own journal. <laughs> I wish you the biggest fun and I also wish you a lot of fun with Barbara's little creatures here. Go to her shop, check that out. By the way, there's a promo code um, to get 10% discount in the info box down below use that code then you can get 10 percent discount in her shop i think that's a really really good deal so check that out <laughs> make your own kaiserschmarrn in your own journal 
be creative, stay healthy and see you the next time. Bye bye.